So if 3D modeling is dead, that begs the question, what is alive? And the answer is procedural modeling. Specifically, this strawberry that you're looking at right now is 100% procedural, it's 100% nodes, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, so strap in. This is gonna be a long one. Okay, so in Blender, go to Geometry Nodes, and for the cube, add a Geometry Nodes node group and get rid of the geometry. And this is where the chaos begins. So Strawberry has a lot of stuff. It has the general strawberry shape, it has seeds, it has leaves, and there's a lot of specifics going on, like the tapering of the strawberry, the indents, the bump, all this. Let's uh, take it step by step by step. So starting off, let's make the general shape of the strawberry. Again, everything we do has to be a node here. It is easier to model it, uh, but this will give us tons of, and tons of control. So I think a sphere is the closest thing uh, to the shape of a strawberry, and all we need to do is kind of pinch it. So it looks more like a diamond or like a strawberry shape. In other words, I wanna control the scaling of it on the X and Y axis uh, relative to the height. So as we go up and down, it should be growing and stretching to get that pinching and that growing and all that. Um, so let's take our sphere, add some geometry, and anytime we wanna change the, um, the position of stuff and change the characteristics of the thing like it was in edit mode, uh, we always use a set position node. So. With this set position node, what I want to do is somehow create a function that does that pinching. So here is how I propose we do that. So we start with a position because that is um, making it so that it's unchanged, right? It, it doesn't matter if this node is connected or not because we're recasting it to the position. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I want to say I want to stretch this on the X and Y axis. So I'm going to multiply by a combine XYZ by a custom vector. And you can see, as long as these are all set to one, again, nothing has changed because we're multiplying X, Y, and Z by one, which means change nothing. But you can see as we take X and Y and grow them, it stretches radially. Um, I guess not radially, kind of like spherically in, in some sense. Radially, maybe, I don't know. Um, in other words, we want the X and Y to be a function of uh, this height, again, is the idea. So I'm going to take the position. We want to capture that height idea. So I'm going to take the Z component, connect it to the X, connect it to the Y. And you can see it almost is like a strawberry if we were to like cut this in half. Uh, but really what's happening here is the uh, scale starts, whoops, the scale starts at one. As we go down the Z axis, it goes to zero. So it pinches infinitely tight and then it goes to negative one. So it kind of inverts. That's why we get this hourglass thing. This is a great way to model an hourglass, by the way. Uh, but I want a 0 to 1 gradient so I can control it, not 1 to negative 1 where it does all this weird stuff. So I'm going to map range from negative 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. In other words, I've taken this gradient and uh, condensed it, remapped it to a 0 to 1 gradient. So now it's the same. Nothing has changed up here. And as we go down, it pinches down to 0 linearly. Okay, so that's almost what we want. I just want a bit more control. So I'm going to add an RGB curves. And this is going to let us now kind of dynamically reshape this and create any shape we want. Specifically, I want this pinching here to be a bit more like curvy like that. So I'm just going to add a, a little dot right here. And you want that to be really close to the, um, to the Y axis. And I'm thinking I also want some curvature up here, but not have it be so big overall. So... As you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of reshaping it until it gives us more of a strawberry shape. And that's just going to be a matter of, uh, whoops, going to be a matter of moving these into the correct positions. So it uh, doesn't need to be perfect, although I am, I am a sucker for perfectionism. I think that's pretty good. At least the pinch on the bottom is good. Maybe this is a bit too... Um, it needs to be flatter on top, which I guess is done like this. Okay, so you could spend as much time as you want getting the shape of this, but I'm pretty happy with the shape of my uh, strawberry. I think the next order of business is we are going to have like leaves coming out of here. Uh, and if you look at a strawberry, it almost has like a divot. It's almost like the shape if you were to press a sphere into the top. So I'm thinking that's the next thing we should do. And by the way, uh, this is going to be a long project, so I'm just going to say right now, it's going to be available on Patreon, so I'm just going to call this Strawberry Patreon if you want to download the final file. Uh, so how do we make a divot here? 
Well, in other words, we want to, again, set position. Anytime we're kind of doing an edit mode operation, we're setting position. I want to kind of take this region, so somehow we need to capture that region, and say, move it downwards. In other words, add negative stuff, or just subtract a uh, vector, okay? Um, so what am I going to do? Again, just like last time, we're going to take the position, connect position, and how do I want to modify this? I want to bring it down. So I'm going to add a negative Z component, right? This moves it downwards. Uh, but we don't want that to be everywhere. So if I do minus one, yes, it moves it, but kind of like too much. Uh, so we need this vector. There's a train going by, my God. <laughs> I live next to a train stop. Don't dox me. Um, I want this vector to not be as simple as negative one. It needs to be a function of this uh, Z component. Um, there's a lot of ways to kind of isolate this region. I'm thinking let's do a kind of creative one. Uh, let's literally imagine that a sphere is pushing this downwards. So I'm adding a sphere. I'm making it a smaller radius. I'm also going to move it up. And we need to somehow say, take the sphere that I'm going to make a bit smaller and have it like literally deform or push down the mesh like it, it was a, a soft body simulation. Well, one way to do that is we're going to use the geometry approximate. You're learning so much in this tutorial. Look at you. Look at you, you little learning guy. We're going to take geometry proximity. That's going to tell us, hey, uh, Strawberry, how close are you each of these points to our sphere? So we're taking our target. Um, being the sphere that we're pushing down. And I'm going to use this distance, which is going to tell us how far away each point is from that sphere and connect it to the Z component. Now, I'm not saying this is the correct thing. Obviously, it's not. But you could see it is um, manipulating this in a more dynamic way where it's not the same everywhere. And what we need to do is we need to recalibrate this function, which might take a second, uh, so that it works for us. So I'm going to map range again, since this is clearly going too far. Now, if the distance is very low, in other words, it's close to the sphere, I want it to deform more. And otherwise, if it's far away, the opposite. So again, I'm going to invert this uh, gradient, which seems to kind of work. You can almost see it looks like the sphere is pressing into here. Uh, we just need to modify it quite a bit. And uh, you could like intellectualize which of these is like the right one. I just find that it's easier to you know, move these things around um, until you get something that works. So I'm just kind of remapping this so it doesn't like push down our thing so much. And I want to remap the distance function here. Now you can see it's kind of working. It's a bit uh, hard to see, but you can see it's kind of pushing this down. And I want to have control over where that happens. So like that and negative. Okay, so yeah, you can think about why this works. I mean, generally, <clears throat> generally, I'm clamping the distance to the useful range and saying uh, where it's uh, close or far away, keep it at one. In other words, do nothing. In other words, and then otherwise move it down. You could think about it. I'm not gonna. Uh, one thing to soften this, you could see it's kind of a linear ramp, is uh, take this linear, set it to smoother step or smooth step, either one. Um, set it to this one, and then I think we just need more geometry here. So I'm going to make it 200 by 200. That's already smoothed it a bit. And now I just need to soften this gradient somehow. Like that. And like that. So this is still like a bit extreme. But you can see how we're kind of getting it. So I'm just going to recalibrate it for a second. We're not going to spend too much time on this. We're just going to get something that's good enough. And uh, don't forget, this is something that we can also alter by moving our sphere. So I'm just going to move it so that it's uh, working for us. So I think this is pretty good. It has a bit of a divot. I'm just going to modify it a tiny bit more because it turns out I'm not happy with it. Like that. Bump up the radius. Move it upwards. Okay. We've flattened the top. You could spend uh, an age, an eon, working on this. And I, I keep, like, uh, talking because I'm trying to buy myself time. <laughs> uh, but let's just say that this is fine. Um, so now we have the thing with a divot in it. How do we add more realism? Well, strawberry isn't this perfect shape with a divot. It has some uh, complexity going on. Uh, so now let's go do another edit mode operation. And this will be the last one. Actually, no, it won't. Uh, we're second to last one, we're going to add some uh, distortion. What do I mean by that? 
Um, I mean, I don't want this to be a perfect shape. I want it to kind of wiggle and break it up a bit. So in the offset, I'm going to use a noise texture. You can see it's one, two dense and two. It's shifted everything up and to the side. In fact, it's uh, done that by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because on average, when you randomize 0 to 1, you get 0.5. Uh, so we need to first correct for this by subtracting the 0.5 vector. And second of all, let's uh, scale our offset noise so that it's less intense and make it a lower scale. And you can see now we're getting some like soft deformation on our strawberry. And you could uh, kind of hone this in. Uh, but I think I'm pretty happy uh, with this. So this is before and this is after. Um, next order of business is let's not only distribute seeds. So I'm putting like a bunch of seeds all over here. And yes, there's a way to do this correctly, but I'm just going to randomly scatter seeds everywhere. Not only let's make seeds, but let's say wherever there's a seed, there should be kind of a divot in our, kind of like the way we did it uh, here. Uh, there should be kind of a divot. So it has like a cave region to put the seeds. So that, that that's a lot to ask. How do we do that? Well, let's take everything we've done so far, which is already pretty complicated just to get the shape, but it is very strawberry-like. Uh, let's take everything we've done and distribute some points. Each point is going to represent a seed. So if we combine these, we'll be able to see it. I'm just going to put seeds all over it. Like technically, they might not be up here. I don't know. And I'm also going to set this to Poisson disk, which basically means scatter them, but have them be a certain distance apart, like don't have them overlap. So I'm going to up our density and just kind of get a ratio that feels like correct, something like that. And you can always uh, change the seed of the seeds, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to worry about actually modeling our seeds, like the individual grains later. For now, I want each of these diamonds, each of these points to kind of deform the mesh. Um, I think we can do this in a couple ways. I think probably the easiest is to do literally what we just did with the geometry proximity. Or you could like literally take the points position and do some math. I'm going to take geometry proximity. So I want to take the proximity of the points, right? Not the faces. This will give us nothing. And I want to do a final set position on this. This is the last one. What do I want to do with it? Well, I want to create a divot. So we want to take the original position, like always, and I want to say modify this somehow. Well, it should go inwards and outwards, right? If I want to create these caves for the seeds. In other words, it should go relative to the normal, the normal. So I'm going to add the normal, which you can see inflates it. If I subtract it, it pinches it and it looks very weird. I want to take the normal and I want to scale it not by a number. This number does let us kind of control this growing and shrinking and all this. Uh, not by a number, but by a function. That function, as you probably guessed, is going to be re related to this distance. So we're going to take the distance. Again, it should be inverted, but I think it's already looking pretty correct, actually. Let's think why. No, it should be inverted. So what we can do, I believe, is we take a color ramp. I'm going to flip these. I'm going to flip them. There we go. Um, it kind of looks incorrect to me, but we can uh, play around with it. And what we want to do is we want to scale it by a large number when it's close, which seems correct, and a small number otherwise. So let's do this. I feel like maybe, maybe inverting it was incorrect. I don't know. We'll play with it and figure it out. So something like that. Bring this in, soften it to make it less intense. And now you can see that we have these ridges, which might be inverted. <laughs> we still need to figure that out. Um, but we have these ridges that you can kind of tell there's pockets for this for these uh, seeds, uh, which, by the way, we should uh, set shade smooth so we can actually smooth that out. Um, and now it's not just like we added another layer of noise. We've added almost like a Voronoi, like we've added this very... Um, informed deformation. Like it's not just random, it corresponds with the seed. So each uh, of these pockets should now have a seed inside of it. And again, I might have inverted it, but I think it's fine. So now that we have the general shape of the strawberry, and I think I'm pretty happy with this, it looks pretty realistic, honestly. And by the way, um, with the uh, distortion, you can always up the detail um, to do that, but I'm not, uh, maybe a little, I'm not gonna too much. Um, now let's actually take care of p replacing these points uh, with seeds. 
So I want to instance. By the way, I know it's getting like darker and darker. Maybe let me turn on the light. I'll be back in a second. And I know I can cut, but I'm not gonna. Think of this as a, why did I render? I didn't mean to render. Uh, think of this as a live stream more so. Um, okay, so we want to uh, replace these with seeds. And again, we're trying to do everything completely procedurally. So we need to model our seeds ourselves. I'm thinking the easiest way to do this is the same way we made the strawberry. We're gonna take a sphere and let's stretch it to look like a seed. How do I wanna do that? Well, first of all, seed is very thin. It's very flat almost. So I'm going to um, scale it on the z-axis to make it flat. We want to pinch it on either the, either the x or the y-axis. And you could do a bit more of like reshaping, but I think honestly this is pretty fine. Um, so I think I'm, I don't know, the moment I said pretty fine, I just started thinking about the Fine Brothers. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but they're still making React, I think. I don't know who's watching it, but they're still making it. Um, either way, uh, we take the seed and we connect it to the instance, which is going to be very big warning. And now we have a bunch of seeds. <laughs> uh, we have a couple things to do. The first thing is we need to bring down the scale to something slightly bigger than zero. So you can now kind of tell it's doing somewhat the correct thing, except this is like a strawberry that's been hit with a magnetic field and all the seeds are pointed the same way. But you can see we have our seeds. Uh, to get these oriented correctly, we have a very nice socket right here, this rotation output uh, coming from the distribute points on faces, connect rotation to rotation, and long story short, that does the correct thing. And again, what I was saying, you can see these pockets are aligned to the seed, uh, which is what makes it look so good. Okay, let's add a bit of randomness. Uh, the scale, not 0.04 everywhere. Let's have it go from 0.04 to like 0.02. It shouldn't be zero because seeds can't be infinitely small, uh, but something like that. And again, we can always change the distribution of seeds, how many there are, whatever. And they seem to be looking pretty good. Um, they're all kind of rotated the same way, like they're all perfectly pointing up towards the north pole of the uh, strawberry. Um, so let's add a bit of randomization there. So I'm going to vector math. Let's see, is it the x-axis? No, that's how you make a porcupine strawberry. It's the Y axis, it seems. Or is it the Z? No, it's the Y. Or is it Y everywhere? No, it seems to be none of those. What, what, what we can do is we can actually take a function with an align normal to vector, or we can be lazy. Let's try being lazy. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll create a function. So what I wanna do is roughly, it's the Y axis, it isn't really but it's close enough that maybe people won't notice. So I'm gonna connect this to the Y axis and increase the rotation from like negative, from 0.7 to negative 0.7. Yeah, like the some of the seeds are kind of going inwards, but I think this is fine. Like, I don't think people can tell. Um, and maybe this is correct anyways. Um, I think this looks pretty good. So from negative 0.7 to 0.7. So this is before rotation, this is width, before scale, uh, width. Uh, so we've added uh, the seeds. Now, I mean, there's always materials and stuff, but in terms of geometry, and you could kind of fine tune this, and by the way, this is all dependent on uh, where we cast the uh, distribution from. So, and what I mean by this is if we change this, it's, the seeds are gonna move with it in some sense, um, and it's all gonna work out pretty well. If we go back and change the shape of the strawberry, you can see the seeds are moving with it um, and you can make weird strawberries. Um, it's all procedural, it all works. I think the final thing, again, if I had more time and I wasn't doing this live, I'd work on this divot, which we already know how to do. Uh, but finally, let's make leaves. That would look better if there was a bigger divot because they kind of come outwards. Uh, but I wanna make a system that kind of distributes leaves in this like rotational way. That was a pretty good drawing. Um, so just like last time, we need to make a object for this. So let's start off with a grid. This time, not a sphere, but we're gonna make a leaf out of a grid. And this is going by faster than I thought it would. Um, so with the grid, 
let's think. What what is a leaf? A leaf is basically a tall rectangle. And let's go into wireframe so we can see. I'm going to add a bit more geometry so we can mess with this. I want to almost make the seed shape again. But maybe we can be lazy about this. Let's try adding a subdivision surface, which will curve our corners. That looks okay, but I feel like we really could benefit from a bit of pinching. So I want this area to be smaller, like it's coming out of the strawberry, and then it grows over time. Luckily, we have already done that with the shaping of the strawberry, so it's the exact same kind of idea. So we're going to set position. We want it to be a function of the pinching should be a function of as we go up and down the y-axis, it seems. The way we have this oriented, it could be x for you. Um, but as we go up and down the y-axis, we want to multiply this um, on the x-axis. So again, if you don't remember, this is literally the setup. If you look at these nodes, this is literally the setup we did back here. With, I mean, we had an RGB curves, but we separated, we combined, we multiplied, like it's the same thing. So I want to scale the multiplied by 1, 1, 1, so nothing changes. As we go on the y-axis, I want it to affect the x-axis. Again, we got that hourglass. It's the same idea. And we know we get that hourglass because our range is a negative 1 to 1, roughly. Uh, so cast from negative 1 to 1. That's 0 to 1. Now, why is it pinching so much? Because we made our grid 3 units tall. So it should go negative, you know, negative 1.5-ish to whatever. So something like that. And then I'm hoping, I don't want to add too much more work to this. So let's just try subdivision surface. That kind of adds the curvature I'm looking for. You could put in more work, but I'm going to do that. And ironically, by decreasing the number of vertices, uh, we get a cleaner shape because it's going to do more smoothing um, and it's not going to be clamped as much. So I think this is an okay shape of a leaf. I think maybe the final thing is let's have this uh, go upwards with a bit of a bend and maybe... Mm, I'm trying to think, do I want to make a leaf and then scatter it a bunch of times and you know have one leaf be copied a bunch of times or do i want to make the leaves and then alter them i think let's make one leaf and copy it i think it should look good enough so we not only need to multiply the leaf but we need to add a z component and that z component again is going to be relative to the y-axis with this map range uh, but just like last time we can use an rgb curves to get a custom mapping for this so this is kind of like the same technique over and over and over again and we need to alter this so it's only on the z-axis. So you'll see what I'm saying in a second. So you can see uh, this whole leaf has been brought up. Oh, I connected the wrong thing. It needs to be map range, you didn't tell me. So is this altering anything? No. Is it because it's not connected to the color? Yes. So you can see now we're getting this uh, gradient kind of thing. And we can alter the shape of this. We want to move this so it's actually touching the ground. I'm just kind of creating a bit of curvature here. Right? And we can be pretty dramatic with this. So this can be a lower point than here. So we actually get like a parabola looking thing. So I'm just going to play with this until it looks correct. There we go. Now we're getting some lift. Let's move. It seems like this point controls where it's touching the ground. So something like that. And that is, you know, roughly the shape of our uh, leaf. I'm happy with that. Um, okay, so now that we have this, let's uh, instance it. So I'm going to transform it. Why? It's very convenient if we have this point on the origin, long story short. So I'm going to move this up by 1.5 units, because again, the grid was 3 units tall. The reason, again, that I move this is now if we copy it, we can uh, rotate it based on the origin, and that's super simple. So how do we get a bunch of leaves? Um, here's a bit of a hack. You could use a duplicate elements, but that's fucking dumb. Uh, <laughs> let's take a mesh line, say have 10 points all on the origin. So I'm saying have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 points right on the center. And for each of those, we're going to instance, so I'm going to instance on these points, each of those is going to get one of these leaves, which is just going to look like nothing changed, but really there are 10 leaves on top of each other. What we want to do now is uh, do randomization, which is what makes this look good. So for the rotation, I'm going to take a random vector, which might seem weird, but you'll understand in a second. Set all these to zero. 
the first thing is we want these to orbit on the z-axis. So we get kind of like, you, you'll, you'll understand. So we get this kind of thing going and have some negatives, some positives. And you can change the seed until you get a good distribution. Because sometimes they'll all be on one side, sometimes they won't. So this is a good distribution right here. And we can add more leaves, just like that. Another one is we want to change the tilt. So this is, again, why it's so useful to have it on the origin. So have some going this way, some going that way. And then the y-axis is kind of like the roll. And all these things kind of contribute to making a good sprout type shape. And you can use this to make bushes and all this. Um, next order of business is let's randomize. I'm going to set all these to zero. Let's do the same process with the scale. Actually, I should set them all to one. Um, again, because it's on the origin oriented correctly, the Z is going to control the lift of this. So some of them are going to be more curved. Some of them are going to be less curved. The X is going to control the thickness of these. So I want some leaves to be thinner and thicker than others. And then I think most importantly, the Y is going to control the length. So we want some short and some long. And all of this makes it look a bit more random. Um, another thing we can do is I'm going to realize these instances. Why? Because I'll actually want to do deformation on these. I'm going to subdivide this uh, mesh to add more geometry. So we realize this, and that's actual geometry. We subdivided it so it has more vertices to work with. So let's see what that looks like. You can now actually see the wireframe of this. And I guess we don't need to subdivide it. That's probably overkill. We have enough geometry. Um, just like last time, we can add an extra element of detail uh, by adding in on the offset some noise. And I think this is what's really going to make it look like a leaf. So I'm going to noise texture. And almost this broken up looks pretty good. Um, just like last time, uh, what I want to do is uh, subtract by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for the same reason. And then I also want to make sure it's subtract. And then I also want to control the scale of the noise. So we get something like that make it pretty detailed, make it low scale, something like that. And then finally, if we do a set shade smooth, I think these look a lot more like Lee. It kind of looks like a, I don't know what to call this plant, but it, lo it looks like leaves, long story short. And if you think about it, we were kind of done with the modeling, right? We have the, um, we have this with the seeds and now we just need to put this on top. Now, we could be lazy about this, so how would we be lazy? We join them together. We take the uh, transform node, so clearly we didn't make them to scale with each other. We scale it down to roughly the right size. We move it up to roughly the right position. Kind of looks really good, honestly. Kind of looks a bit carroty, but it's, it works. What am I trying to say? We could do this, or, or what, what happens if, by the way, we change the... I'm looking for the controls of our stra strawberry. What if we change this, the noise of it? Or what if we make it not as tall? Well, it seems to not matter really. What I was saying is we can make a function that tells us where's the top of the strawberry and then move the leaves to there, but it doesn't seem to matter too much, right? I'm gonna skip that step, but the uh, Patreon blend file is gonna have it. So I'm just gonna roughly position it where I'd want it to be change the scale for what I'd want it to be. And this, these leaves actually look better than the uh, original that I made. And that's the modeling for the strawberry. Now, we could do materials. Should I spoil you guys with some materials? Yeah, let's do, I'm not gonna go super in depth, uh, but let's make some super basic materials just to show you how to do it. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm setting up my scene for cycles to have an HDRI. The lighting is important because I want like reflections and all this. Uh, which is what's going to make it look realistic. And let's make three uh, materials and then quickly wrap up this tutorial. So our first material I'm going to call red. That's going to be the red part of the strawberry. The second material I'm going to call seed. And then the third material I'm going to call leaves. And I'll just generally show you how to get to the result, but not get you all the way there. Because this is more of a procedural modeling tutorial. Um, for red... Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to apply it uh, to, let's see, is this the strawberry? Yeah, this is the strawberry. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> uh, okay, hopefully that blocks some of the sound. Um, I want to set material for each part individually because these are three different components. So this gets the red, 
the seeds get the seed and then the leaves and make sure you put this in the correct spot otherwise you'll see the issue uh, the leaves get the leaves so for the red um, let's make sure this is working i'm going to change the material and yes it's only affecting this so strawberry roughly is red with low roughness so it's shiny and you want to make it a bit darker and what really sells it beyond this which is pretty much most of the way there is you want to add a quick like bump map nothing too fancy so i'm just going to add a noise texture and you can see this is already adding more detail i'm going to up the scale up the detail and bring down the strength so it's not as intense and you can see this is what gives it a very strawberry like quality bring down the distance so it's not as intense something like that you could play with it so it doesn't look so much like a rock but i think that looks pretty good uh the second material and if i was making this myself i would have it not just be red but some areas are redder than others with another noise texture otherwise uh the seed pretty simple you kind of make it yellowish if you want to get fancy you can use a geometry node with random per island and this is going to do um wait is this oh it's affecting both the we didn't change this to leaves good test um use the random per island which isn't working right now because we didn't realize our instances so every seed is just an instance of a single seed realize those instances and now you can see each seed has a random value connect this to the base color send this through a color ramp make uh, the base seed kind of dark kind of yellow and make the bright seed kind of white kind of yellow so it has a bit of a range to go through and now the seeds are a bit randomized and you know there's some work you can do to make them not look so plasticky but that looks pretty good um finally for the leaves we're going to do something pretty simple um, we're going to do the same idea. We're going to do a random per island, so not all the leaves are the same shade. Except this time, instead of the yellow, I'm going to color ramp these with some green. So some of these get a darkish green, and some of them get a much brighter, more saturated green, as you can see. Connect that to the base color, and then just like the... Actually, that looks pretty good. Uh, this looks better than my original strawberry. Maybe I'll share this one. Um... But just like the strawberry body, um, this would look better with some uh, bump mapping because the leaves are crinkly, right? So we take the height, we add some noise texture, and look at that. We get crinkly leaves. You can make this high detail or low detail. It's up to you. I think high detail looks better. And uh, you can play around with it so it doesn't look so bad. So maybe make it low roughness so they're kind of wet almost. And you could play around with making them, like, maybe not subsurface-y, that looks weird, but maybe a bit transmissive-y, transmissive so you can kind of see through them, maybe just a little, otherwise it looks weird. Uh, but that is how you make the strawberry, okay? Um, cool. Um, wow, it, it has gotten dark, my face is just blue from the monitor. Okay, we've been going for a while, and it's been a while since I've done one of these Patreon callouts. I'm just going to do it. Um, I have a Patreon, as I mentioned before. This is where you can get the blend files. You get the idea. Just click the link in the description if you're interested in these three things. Do you want to watch tutorials early? Some of the time. Uh, so I post them unlisted before other people can see them. Do you want the blend files, and do you want exclusive tutorials? And I make tutorials that aren't available on YouTube. You can watch those. If you want access to any of these things, click the uh, link below. Patreon is in some weird thing. It's just a place where you could throw a dollar or five dollars and get the, these things back. It's up to you. Um, but I haven't done it in a while, so I wanted to pimp it out, maybe get more patrons. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know I've been making a lot of clickbaity tutorials, this one included, but I wanted to do a proper 30-minute geometry nodes thing. So there we go. Thanks for watching. See ya.